In this, the second of the Contractor and Farm series, we spend a full year with contractor and farmer Roger Perry based in Ard's Gull outside of the High County Kildare. He runs a fleet of New Holland tractors, combines and forager, backed up by a JCB416 loader. He talks to us about how he got started in the contracting business. Uh, started in 1983, Harvest and Beat with um, single raw armour, a yellow one at that, and uh, a Ford 76 we started off Harvest and Beat. I came out upon a, a farmer, he was um, giving up pulling his own beet and it just happened to me and one day and I bought the beet harvester right. and he gave me a start and that's where it started. Right. And then we start next year, that year we pulled 70 or 80 acres, following year we probably doubled it in a steamroll from there, beet was big business. Back in the day, back in, very back close to us. Yeah, here. well it was big business like, mm. you know. Yeah. Then we evolved into beet sowing and then we went into tilling and Corn so they just kind of And tell me what kind of tractors would you have had then at the very beginning? Like, you know, what would you well, start we had, out with? We had a seven six here did nearly all the work and then I had a four six ten. Right. And it used to saw beet and saw corn and things like that, but and uh, we had actually pulled beet one year with a Ford seven thousand, I think nineteen eighty five. Right. We had a seven thousand pulling beet. And were the farmers drawing out themselves or were you had We had out? a bit of a trailer and drawing it out and that time it was slow going, farmers had more had their trailers, you know, a little six ton trailer to do what you wanted to do in the day. There was no big you know, the dock was all yeah. docks were the beaten, things like that. It wasn't really it was just it wasn't constant. It was a different pace. Yeah. You know. During the winter months, Roger uses this time to maintain his machinery and today had a visit from the Vaderstad Ireland rep, Pascal Toomey. Yeah, we're going to have a look at this 
And the date of running today, no? No, but sure, that's what the winter is about, isn't it? That's right. That's right. Is it part of the thing that you're doing that? It's not clean, you don't you know, wash it and go out. I one set of discs put on it, complete culture discs and tilling discs, and she's probably due another. She's probably due a set there now, maybe after the spring. She be due a set of tilling discs and uh, yeah. whatever. But the um, the culture discs is a bit of wear left in them yet. Yeah. What about culters? Uh, not one here and there now. Yeah. We were replaced. Um, because of broken or stones? Uh, right? Stones. We probably didn't adjust them in time. Right. Up. Okay. You know? Yeah, well that can happen alright if you leave them down a bit too far sometimes. Yeah, if you don't yeah. adjust them as you wear. Yeah, exactly. Um, on the net, it's a bulletproof machine, isn't it? Very, very uh, efficient drill. Very yeah. Cheap way of drilling corn. That's the job. Effective. Yeah. Pipes down here for the grass seed? Yeah, we, we, we experimented with sowing grass seed one time. Yeah. Um, we didn't elaborate on it much. No. Right. We just did a bit of a trial on it. Well, it's, the sowing of the grass seeds isn't, isn't a problem. It's getting the ground ready to sow grass seeds. It's, yeah. it's, wherein, it's not the sowing. It's not like sowing corn. It's getting the ground ready is more important than actually sowing. Yeah. The sowing is the easy piece, if yeah. you know what I mean, by sowing grass seeds. It's the preparation previous. Yeah. Well, you're lucky you have the right tools for the job for getting the ground ready anyway. Yeah. yeah. With dung spreading starting in mid-January, Roger gives us an overview of this side of the business. Yeah, muck spreading is a good part of the business. Keeps the loader going, tractors going, slacker times, early in the year and later in the year. When there's nothing going on in January, muck spreading is there. A lot of straw bedded sheds in the area, a lot of dung to be spread here and there. So, yeah, it's a good business. Hmm. Good business. And it, keeps, it keeps the workload spread across the area. It spreads the workload and it leads on into other work here and there and, you know, it completes the job, the whole job for some farmers and it adds mm. a bit on to another farmer. Yeah, it's relaxing, there's no great, there's no one saying it's, it's too wet, it's too dry, it's not fit, you know, it's, it's only spreading dung. Yeah, so that's it, You're, you have to get out of the land one way or the other. Yeah, once you can keep it spread even and do a decent job on it. Of course, yeah. No Wet or dry weather, it doesn't have well, as big an issue. Yeah, you wouldn't be out in wet weather either, but it's, you know, you have to respect the farmer's land too, you know, you can't be just plowing around in it, because you can do nothing else. While Roger loads the dung with his JCB 416, he normally pairs up his two New Holland T6080s with two of his 10 ton bunning rear discharge spreaders. We don't do any tanker work or slurry work, we concentrate on solids and let the other contractors do the tanker work. So, well that's it and you'd be one of the bigger contractors for this dung spreading in the area too? Yeah, we would have been the first around with a rear discharge spreader, yeah. Okay. They're simple, they're handy enough to keep going, you know, they don't yeah. cost a lot of money.
Here we have a look at Andy pressing with Rogers T7 250, coupled to a four and a half meter Vaderstad Rexius twin. You know, winter plowing done and ground gets dry and ignorant in the spring, that that will just crumble it. It'll rip up the ground and crumble it down. Yeah. Seen a new machine working, a new Rexus twin working. I thought I went to see it working one time, and I thought the rings might have a different effect, and newer rings might have a different effect. And I couldn't see any difference in the job. Yeah, yeah. you know. Well, all they talk about is the shoulder. The like shoulder, that's yeah. what we talk about is the shoulder, and the narrower the shoulder gets, probably the less yeah, pressing you're effect you're getting. You still, you still have to wait. You haven't to wait the yeah. two fingers yeah. there. There's still quite a bit of shoulder left yes. on these rings, like. Yes. Um. So I, I would say it's good to go for another couple of seasons yet. I would think so. Yeah. The only thing you have to watch out for is in case you break any of these springs. Have you ever broken a spring here? No. Yeah. You just have to watch out for them because if you break a spring, then it's then a the, it, the tension, the loose, the, the the tension goes keeping the rings up tight. Hmm. So then the rings loosen and then they start to wobble and then they start to wear. While the press is heavy in the field, it's also heavy on the road. Yeah, yeah, they're fairly sore on tyres, alright. They are, yeah. yeah, yeah. But they're a heavy machine. Like. 50k tractors pulling a, a 7 ton yoke on a single axle around the roads. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not strong. No, 50k is probably a bit. No, but now my lads wouldn't be doing 50k because I'm always conscious of what we're doing, but 50k tractors isn't the answer to everything. We are back in Roger's home farm where Keith is drilling with his T6080 and Vaderstad 3 meter box drill. Spring barley area, both malt being three or four miles away of malt that supplies malt to the Agio. Big bit, big part of our, bit, of our cereal business is malt and barley. Right. Spring, and a lot of that is sown in the spring. So the spring sown is a big bit of the business. We have a three metre Vallerstead box drill and a three metre Coon Power Hara box drill. And it allows us to spread out the sown into two different places a day or three different places, pins, where, where where we are or what we're doing. Maybe the the power hour can saw headlands and the Ballerstead can saw the fields. It's not every day you work a Ballerstead, but the day you do work a far out ways the days you can't work it.
While conditions are favourable, there are some times you can't stop, so you have to call in backup. Hello? Yeah, um, chicken filler oil. Just cheese and mayonnaise, loads of mayonnaise. Just, yeah, just plain chicken. Here's a cup of tea on here, man, as well, please. We often put a ton, ton, ton and a half, a ton and a quarter. We might go to Liffey Mills to pick up seed for a man, put all his seed into one box yes. of broken soda, corn for him and come back again. Yeah. 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 After having a demonstration of a grain and fertilizer drill, Roger talks to us about the pros and cons associated with them. Yeah, we experiment with grain and fertilizer. Um, yeah, it's a good system. Yeah, I' not so sure as a contractor is it is it. Uh, I don't know whether the farmer would see the benefit of it. Mm -hmm. You know, it was extra work for the contractor, Definitely. and the farmer was getting it. You know, I, I. I if you had, look at, if you had 500 acres of your own corn, yeah. Yeah. When you had a system or in place, but yeah. you're going here, there, and everywhere. Farmers are spreading their own fertilizer, they're able to handle it. Yeah. It's a possibility not to be wrote. I do think, I do think with winter cereals, continuous winter cereals, that I do think a combined drill putting in 0730 or pahash in the autumn <coughs> with the seed in continuous wheat rotations or barley, and you can put in 0730 or pahash. I do think it has a place. There's a lot of benefits for that. Definitely. Yeah. Now spring barley, yeah, it, it's a great job for spring barley. It eliminates the fertilizer spreader, but we found that we had to have a loader there. You nearly had to have a man there with a loader to keep the thing flowing. Like. Yeah, two good drills, two simple drills, um, cheap enough to run. Uh, Valorstad is a good drill. Yeah, covers ground, covers a lot of ground. When you get the data saw with a Valorstad, you can cover a lot of ground. Power hours gives us the option. Some farmers want power hours. Some farmers don't like the Valorstad. That's their opinion. And uh, we have to respect that. So we have the power hour drill and the Valorstad drill. And uh, we saw a lot of spring barley. And generally, the window for sowing spring barley is about ten days. Some mm. land is drier sooner than others, you know. Different conditions of the yeah. soil, I suppose, be all different. Yeah, and some uh, probably suit the machines other than yeah. Other. Some some land doesn't suit the batter step, but very very little mine, very little. It mm -hmm. Takes a lot that a batter, it has to be woeful bad before a batter step don't work in it, you know. With the spring barley drilling at full tilt, we see Roger on the high bonnet T68 in Cool One Pass, making light work with the good ground conditions.
With the crops established, we move on to fertiliser and talk to Cameron about his tractor, the T7040. How do you like the T7040, Cam? It's a good tractor, yeah, I don't mind it at all. It's, some lads don't like it, but I'm used to it and it suits me and I'm happy enough to go up to either with it. It's got a kind of having your own tractor and for what you have to do, you're not chopping the change the whole time. Yeah. It's kind of like a a little bit of trouble, but it's what everything does too. What kind of trouble did it give it? Or? It's horrible. It's horrible. And, uh, well, so if there was a problem with the uh, hydraulics. How do you like the pre-dough that's better anyway? Oh yeah, yeah it's grand. It's uh, accurate enough. Never getting too much more of it. As long as you go by the maths and calculations and set it up right, you're not too far out. I'm saying that now and again. I suppose depending on what more than it is or the day after. Yeah. Simple enough to get it mixed up. I see you have done a bit of a reconditioning job on it. Yeah, well it was 12 year old and we started to notice it so we had to put out the both sides of it and shake it again. Put bearings, rollers, belts, pulleys, the back box that the pulleys and the belts are in. Recondition the whole yoke basically, over the winter time, it's great again. Roger was one of the first local contractors to own a bulk spreader 12 years ago. He talks to us about the Breedall K85. Completely redone it this year, put new panels in it, re-spread it, new floor belt. Yeah, good spreader, done a lot of work for us. We did a lot of spreading in our days. Uh, bulk spreading was very popular and then it died a good bit, but we still have a cheap way of spreading fertilizer. We have a good spreader. Mm. And uh, yeah, it's good business. It completes the whole farm job. You're able to do stubble to stubble. You have a fertilizer spreader. You're able to spread the fertilizer for lads, you know, and it's a one man operation. It's simple. Having started out contracting at Harvesting Beet, Roger has kept his armour salmon six row cedar and continues to drill fodder beet for some farmers and contractors in the area. The beet was a great business, it spread the workload. We had a, it made us busy in the spring so on, and then we had a workload right up to Christmas with the harvesting. Mm. Yeah, it was a great spread of work. Yeah, beet was a big business. Was, yeah, we bought the beet cedar in 93, I think. Yeah, 93. And uh, we sold an awful lot of beet with the first year we had it. But we still still kept it. We sold the harvesters. We sold fodder beet for lads here and there and other contractors. Mm. There's other contractors there to harvest it. But uh, yeah, beet was always, always a part of the business, always part of the livelihood. Yeah, it was a big cedar that time when we bought it, you right. know. A six row, I think it was uh, £1,100 a row to buy it, I think, at the time. I think that year it was 750 acres of beet sold with that machine alone. Oh, yeah, yeah sure, Armour Salmon were the, they were the men, like, you could, they had they had a monopoly of it, beet seeders and harvesters. And they were based in Carlow local yeah. for parts as well, like, you yeah, know. We, so. we had a lot, we, we used to run um, 
a double row but and a single row armors. Mm. And then I saw the single row and uh, we kept a double row armor for one or two years after that and then we bought tire gods. But How we, did you find the tire gods in there, Roger? Yeah, well God we really thought we hit the big time there. But then yeah. they were a super machine, yeah. How are they for stones now? How about stones? Everyone says stones, tire god equals stones, so stones. More like you know, there is less dealing with it. Mm. You know, yeah. we had our own beat here, and we we had twenty acres of beat. We had no problem with stones, but we right. we picked the stones out when we loaded. Yeah, cleaner loader. Yeah, but yeah. It, it was a great machine. The copper ground, real comfortable way of pulling beat. And, um. Yeah, we had they were a great machine. Yeah, mm. I'd yeah. say if the beat had a stead, we would have evolved into a into a self propelled like you know. I mean, it's September came. It was beat. Yeah. And beat all the, the way whole through. time the whole time. All the way through to January anyway. All the way through to January. Shows. Yeah. Yeah. Well we always tried to be finished the first week in December. We had a road used to be trying to finish for the first week in December, but then a couple of bad years and the weather slowed it down. Yeah. Hmm. But it was always good to us. Yeah. Good business. That's it. And there was a bit more money at maybe than the series at the time as well. There was, yeah, the beat always saved the lad's bacon at mm. the end of the year. He mightn't have had a good harvest, but when he got the beat, the beat always, always... Cleared him off. It always straightened it out, you know? Yeah. With some early summer spraying required, we see David with his T6070 and 21 meter Bargham sprayer spraying some of Roger's spring crops. Roger discusses the benefits of subcontracting the spraying to David as the spraying program would normally be around silage harvesting time. We don't own a sprayer, uh, we don't do spraying, but we have a local contractor that does all our spraying for us, sprays our crops and any customers crops and he looks after everything and we don't have to worry about spraying at all mm. because it used to clash with silage and you'd have to have a good man to go, you'd have to have a man to go spray and then it doesn't, it's not a spray and then he's sitting there, you're down a man and just one year we were busy at silage and I asked my neighbour David Kelly would he spray a bit for me and that's how it evolved and now he's a great spraying business going there and he covers any crops, whole farm jobs that we do, he does all the spraying for us. Works out exceptionally well. You can't do it all. No, no. You can't true. do it all, but the bit you do do, you want to do, do it right. right with attention to detail. Here we see the delivery of Roger's first brand new self-propelled, a New Holland F4600 Forager, and he gives us a rundown of the harvesters he's had down through the years. The kid double chop with a couple of them, and then we bought a New Holland 525 trail precision chop, which started us into precision chopping, and then we went on to JF1100s. We had great, we had great times with them. They were great machines. So what machines were you pulling them with now? TW15 and 8560. Right. Yeah, we went from two acres an hour with a 525 to four acres an hour with a, a JF 1100. Big step up still. So. Yeah. Yeah. Then in 2000 we went to second and FX 375 and that brought us up to eight acres an hour. Thought we hit the big time. <laughs> but um, that's how it evolved on then. Then I had a couple of FX 60s. 
Yeah, good machines. We had some great days with them. Mm. We made some great. We we covered some great ground with them in days. We had. They were great machines, but a lot of minding on them. But when you minded them, they they, they minded you. Exactly. Yeah. And then. Um, and then, 2013, we bought our first brand new harvester, an FR 600. You were step moving up your you well, we in were, line with this, the size yeah, of the harvester. Yeah, she was coming in as the same horsepower as the FX60. That's all we wanted. We didn't want output, we just wanted consistency and reliability. Yeah. Right. You know, we didn't need any more output for what we were doing. With Keith using the T7250 mowing for the first time, we find out his thoughts on the new addition to the fleet. Yeah, it's a fine tractor. Very does a good job on it anyway. Yeah. How does it compare to the 7040? It's a little bit user friendly. In what way, like? Or? Well, it's handier on headlands and everything. You just press the button back and forward and that's it. No clutching, just stay going forward the whole time. Stuff, yeah, very good. And uh, you, you're still on the doubles. Any sign you getting triples? Hopefully so this week. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Getting a demo anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe put that in that he'll buy it now anyway. <laughs> you, you hope he'll buy it anyway. Hope so. To make your life easier and faster. Get the work done faster anyway. I still need to stay ahead of them with the two anyway. Yeah. Pretty much, you know, farmers doing their own. So the auto command is a good job anyway. It's a good job when you get used to it, yeah. Mm. It takes a few days to get used to it. Right. That's all. But it is, it's it's handy enough job now. Yeah. of it on a Saturday evening, isn't it? Just stay away from the hedges in future. <laughs> well fenced. <laughs> Not so much anymore. How many metres did you put out of the curtain? I don't know, we're going, still going. I don't know if you have that camera on me now, John, I wouldn't be smiling. <laughs> With the silage harvest in full swing, we catch up with the crew in their first week out and talk to Cameron about his new toy, the FR600. So Cam, how do you like the FR? Jesus, it's a grand machine. It's a lot big step up from the FX60. <laughs> I'd you, say so. You have a piece of mind driving it more so than anything else. Yeah. With the FX you always thought it was going to break down. You'd hear every bang and clatter and you thought it was going to fall asunder. But it's just, it's flying. It's a great machine. Yeah. Or should it have to be? Brand new. Brand new, exactly. Something wrong if it wasn't great. How many days are you going now with it? Since Tuesday. Today is Friday, yeah. yeah. So. God, Tuesday. How yeah. many acres are you after putting through it now at this stage? 
We've done 105 yesterday. Um, I don't know, I suppose we have to put 300 maybe, 350 at all. I'm not sure. I'd say in around that. You're not under too much pressure then if that's the case. No, like there's no pressure really this year. We're flying through, everything's going well. With no breakdowns, just, just a bit of setting up on this as we went along, like getting to, used to it and a bit of calibration and that. Back at the pit, we see the JCB 4 and 6 in action, keeping the lows moved. This is touch screen, but everything nearly has to go through the computer, like mm. set up and all that. It's complicated, is it? To it's, not, it's not really, but like, if you wanted to really set up anything at all, it's through the computer. Yeah, that's the way it is. With but other than that, it's grand, it's driver friendly. It's grand with that new Smith trailer and all because you put a nice big load on it and with the spout goes up so high in this you can really feel it like yeah. you can get a really good high load on them without yeah. spilling too much. What's the Smith like to oh, it's load? Lovely trailer. Lovely. Yeah. In comparison to the canes now. Oh well the think? canes are lovely too but the Smith you can just you can get a real nice load in it. Even big yeah. motor of a load in it. It's a stable trailer as well. Yeah. You're saying the canes like. aren't stable? Oh they are. Very stable. <laughs> But the Smiths has its place too. Yeah. Probably more so for the grain when we start putting corn and all that will be really show its place, but it's, it's grand now. You can see you can notice the difference like when you're filling the trailers, you might get two rows into one of them, but you might get nearly three into the Smith like or two yeah. and a half. Eighteen foot versus twenty foot. Mm. But this is a big lump of a trailer like for a twenty foot. Yeah. Very big. Seven to forty is my lay before. How's Andy behaving himself on the trailers now this year? The new, day, the new staff member. Some days he's like a, a bendy bus as I do call him. <laughs> and a bus shirts. So all I do be swerving in and out and then he starts swerving in and out and then I straighten up and that just be big. Makes, makes it a little bit more interesting. Are you smiling then? 
Tony, you're on camera. There's no good side to a leash, man. Yeah, these leash dogs are getting terrible last two days, whatever is going on. One day I went to get my tongue rest and all I want to stop. Been leash man in the Kildare outfit, jeez, yeah, yeah. I tell you. And then they moved to Kildare then as I'm leaving with the boys then as well, so it'll be rough now with the best of times. Imagine. We talked to Roger about his silage outfit and how it suits his workload. Well, the FR600, she was bought to replace a 60, you know, 10 acres an hour would be our schedule. And um, it's able to do what we want to do. And we have 18 foot can trailers, great trailers, nice and light. Mm. They're able to draw what we're, we want to cook them today. Yeah. We never found one till we bought a Smith trailer, it's 20 foot. And uh, more so for grain haulage than uh, silage, but mm -hmm. we use it at silage as well. Yeah, okay, right. But we like the 18 foot cans, they're light on the land and they're easy pull. We use a rake as well, so we rake everything. A lot of farmers mow on their own side, so they're not going to have groupers, so mm. we have yeah. a rake going the whole time. Contractor's big expense. After a hard morning's work, the machines need to be filled. It is is a big cost to, to keep a ped as best we can, and sure, the farmer knows it's diesel is a big cost, so it's about keeping it under control. A good supplier there delivers on time and deliver to the field. There's no problem with that. Yeah, makes a big difference though. Like oh, it does, yeah. When you go one to one with a person, like, and you have a relationship, you know, you can ring them up the night before and tell them you'll be somewhere dinner time tomorrow. We'll be gone for the dinner and he'll come and fill up the stuff. And it also saves time not having to go back to the yard.
Like any operation, things have to run smoothly and with tight schedules to be met, Roger values the effort put in by his suppliers and crew. There's a lot of background guys that don't get unsung heroes in the operation, mm. like the mechanics that come to us and what they have to put up with mm. and listen to us and come in at all hours of the day and night. You know, yeah. they're all background guys, let them ring up, you know, to ask mend the wheel and things like that. Exactly. They're yeah. all people, without them, we can't be where we are. Well, that's it too. You know, that's and they're it. all, you know, they're, they're all kind of, people kind of forget about them, you know, and take them for granted, but like mechanics, and they come, salesmen, they come, you know, tire men, and all the people that make food for us across the, throughout the year, like, I mean, mm. that's all appreciated in our business. Yeah. Well, I appreciate it anyway. Exactly. All, all the mechanics that come and are at the end of the phone to be able to answer a query and, yeah, you know. That's it. Service is a big part of it too. Oh, really. service, yeah. Uh, we can only give as good a service as good a service as we get. Yeah. You know, to start every day, lay out where we should be going, <laughs> where we have to be tonight, as well. where we have to be tonight, what's on tomorrow, you know, so they'll know. Yeah. So every man knows his job basically. Yeah. Work out with, with the work as a team. <laughs> yeah. It has to be a team effort. Mm. The staff we have, oh, sure, we have a great crew of lads, like. Yeah. Um, you know, you don't want to shout out to anyone individually, right? <laughs> they'll all know who they are when they're listening to this. <laughs> Very important. I can only be as good as the crew of men I have behind me. Well, that's it too, yeah, you know? exactly, yeah. And uh, a great crew of lads behind me, lovely guys. And a pleasure to have them. Yeah, well, that's so so important. Okay, we all have our moments. Well, everyone does. And then, so what? Uh...
Here we see the oldest tractor in Roger's fleet, a TM155, along with his 30 foot coon rake. With the harvester on its first week out, Roger talks to us about the new F4. Yeah, it's a whole new concept, isn't it? You mm. know, we're after doing 13, four, 13 years, with 12 years with FXs and we know them inside out. Yeah. We're now we're into a whole new thing. It'll take, it'll take a bit of getting used to. Right. It's a handle on it. Mm. But, um, yeah, it sure has to be the way forward, isn't it? It does, yeah, exactly, yeah. A lot of new technology in it has with any new harvester. That's you it. You know, but um, we hope. It should go well once it stays going for us and works every day. It gets through the work. It gets through really. the work, really, as long as there's not too much wrenching. Yeah, well, that's it. It's important. Yeah, yeah. Once there's consistency, it's about staying going. With the history of JCBs and Roger's outfit, we discuss his current 416. Good loader. Um, we're happy with it anyway. Okay, she's probably a bit light, but um, she might struggle for 15% of the silage we do, but the rest of the work it excels in, you know, loading down grain and things like that. She's handy and she's nifty and she's lively. You know, okay, it'll be big days when we're putting in a lot of grass, but you'll try and get another yoke up on the pit to roll it and something like that, which is good loader. It's important to have the pits rolled all right. Like, or you know, with the, the, the silage is cut in the field, it's made in the pit. It's, it fits into our operation, you know. Yeah. We looked at other loaders and they're bigger and they're heavier, whilst it'd be nice for silage, but they'll struggle for other parts of our work, you know. 
I, I, suppose, I suppose the silage is 30% of our load of work. We looked at white wheels. Um, white wheels is okay, but then you'll be cutting silage today, you'll be cleaning out his dung shed tomorrow. White wheels, a lot of minding on them. You know, loading dung and things like that. Yeah. A lot of minding, loading grain, you've a lot of rubber on the concrete. But there's a lot of getting used to on it, you know, we've got a lot of we've a lot of things to learn about it. So mm. In time, in time. In time. Yeah. Well, what's what's so different? I suppose there's more electronics involved. Ah, there's, there's a lot of electronics on the FX is much the same. It's just different settings and different ways of doing things and you know, it's a different drum in it than what was in the FX. Mm. And uh, it's a different pickup on it and you know, it's just there's a lot of getting used to a lot. Well, we think anyway. It's probably a smoother machine on the on the crop as well, is it? Or no, you couldn't fault an FX sixty. Yeah, right. We had great days with them. Yeah, okay. We had some great days with them. Yeah. And we did one forty fives, one fifties, couple of days, ten acres consistently every hour. Every hour, that's it. Every right. hour, consistent. As we move into the evening. Extra tractors and trailers are drafted in to assist with the longer draw. We have a chat with Andy and he has given us a few tips that have helped him in the silage. Memory recipe what was essential for going inside the yesterday? Yeah. Well window cleaner. Bog road. <laughs> I have to have enough bog road. If I was selling bog road, I'd be a wealthy man here now today and yesterday. So Andy, you owe me 50 quid anyway. Why? Keep the smile on in the video. I, I did. did I'll you? show it to you. <laughs> I may ask Roger for me overtime money, so I saved it. <laughs> I wasn't expecting on that. Oh yeah, Johnny's on his brand new tractor up there today. This is must our be, debut. Must, must be happy, so. Oh, very, very happy. <laughs> now, he's not driving her like he normally drives, but he's a bit more uh, TLC about him there now uh, today, so he has, but he's doing all right now. So he is. There's a smaller trailer than usual, all right, but I know he's getting on grand now. She looks well. Good, good, good. Well, I'd say we'll be working late. in the What kind of hours do we do tonight now? Uh, probably one or two o'clock, I suppose. Well, what time is it now? It's 8 o'clock there, now we have 7, yeah. 8 o'clock, so, yeah, I suppose another, well, yes, yeah, well, another 4 hours at the most, yeah, maybe uh, or 12 o'clock or that. Well, tomorrow's Sunday anyway, so we, or we won't be going out anyway tonight, so you might as well work Sunday when you're not going out Saturday night. You so. might as well work all night if yeah. you're not going out. <laughs> yeah, but let's the other side of it too. But, because uh, once 8, or 8 o'clock comes in the evening, your Saturday night is gone. Exactly, yeah. You won't be getting any drink or anything. So, well miss it tonight, so. Yeah, well, this is the third week in a row now, so. And we missed the bank holiday weekend last weekend as well. Shame, as we were at good. silage, so. I would make up for it though.
down the road I'm on Getting a demonstration of the Coon Triples, we talked to Leonard from J.R. Perry about the mowers. It's going to be a big job trying to sell it now, Leonard. I wouldn't say so. <laughs> will, you have to, will you have to be worried about Keith or Roger? Keith has it sold already for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't think there will be a problem selling it. Yeah. Roger machine, has the, the acreage to, the to machine, use it. The machine sells itself. Oh, you, he has the, has the acreage to justify it, you know. Perfect match, John, yeah. Triples there, totaling 30 foot. Um, capable of somewhere between up to maybe 150 acres a day. No problem, like, you know. Yeah. Very easily driven. You know, P7 there, 250, 200 horsepower rated, well able for it. Yeah. You know, so. And no conditioners either? No conditioners, no need for the conditioners, John. With the, like the sun we have here this afternoon. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, you know, it's doing a fabulous job. So the FR600 is a good match for that. Good match. That good outfit match. too. Yeah, yeah. Well, he can, he can uh, keep up to the 600, no problem. He doesn't have to be working as long a day as with the triples compared to the doubles. Yeah. Keep up to the 600. With the first cut silage finished up, the attention turns to the harvest, where Cameron is harvesting winter barley with Roger's New Holland CX840, assisted by the T7250 with Smith trailer. barley harvest probably doing second cut during while the winter barley is going on um winter barley doesn't last however long i'll see the rape then um we have three combines going probably what are they now roger we have a cx840 a cs640 and a tx62 some people would, might think we might do it all with one big combine or 
two fairly average combines, but three combines I'm able to deal with, with three customers on the one day. day. On the one day, if we're not busy combining it well, you leave one combine at home and they can go and cut sideways or the other work. You know, two combines might keep it done. Then for the big push, you'd have three combines out. We go back to Roger's yard where the silage gear is parked up as the lads are driving combines. We see Roger harvesting oilseed rape for his neighbour and he talks to us about the header he uses. Then we bought a Biso rape extension for cutting oilseed mm. rape. It makes it all the easier. And um, uh, how, how does that improve the operation? I suppose? I think let the, 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 the rape fall into the combine better, fall into the knife better as you're able to cover ground. It doesn't trash it as much, mm. you know. Right. We only have it for one combine. But that's all you need because I suppose one it's combine, relative to the one acreage you, you would be doing rain. anyway. Yeah, but the weather is fine, it's not so bad. If the weather is going to break, it's rape can be a fickle crop. Yeah, that's it. I suppose if you get the right conditions, it's not too bad really. Yeah, good heavy rain or good windy night could shed it all. That's it too. So you need to take it when you can. With the harvest in full swing, we talked to Roger about how he manages to keep the grain away from all the combines. We play with a good, good haulier there, he's able to service us there, he's able to um, draw the grain to board mod for us, you know, and we're able to keep combine and, and he's able to keep drawing. You're able to keep the lads and that you have working for you yeah, tractors, moving all the time. Yeah, tractors can do something else, they don't have to be sitting in, there's lorries for roads and tractors for fields. Well that's it. You yeah. know, we're a real good haulier at the job, he's well able to keep to us. And and the logistics are moving everything around, you exactly, know. Yeah. Um, you know, we could have the three combines working at one time in one field and it still can keep us going. 
and yeah. I'm not paying men sitting in queues. They can do other work. Yeah. You know, we can... It makes a lot of sense, really. Like, you know, we can do other work, like cutting second cut silage or doing a bit of reseeding if they're not wanting it to harvest. Yeah, the harvest is a relaxing time, isn't it? Yeah, well, that's it, too. Cut away. It's a busy time, too, though, Roger. You'd be working late nights as well, wouldn't you, yeah, really? Sure. We're well primed after coming out of six or seven weeks of silage, we're well primed to late nights, aren't we? So you think you're going to relax then ah, after yeah, sure. throughout the harvest? The harvest is, is lovely. Once you get the right conditions, I suppose, yeah, the sure. weather, it gets wet. It's wet. It's wet. It's wet. You stop. You know, you're not worried about whether to mow or not to mow. Exactly. Well, that's it too. So you know, once the moisture is right. Yeah. Well, all the, all the barley has to be caught under 21.5% moisture. Yeah. Or, uh, uh, other than that, it won't be accepted. Exactly. For right. So... It's a bit tricky enough. And you have you have your own malt and barley to cut here in the home farm as well, Roger? Yeah, we, we grow malt and barley as well. Mm. So, oh, one of the, like, was a great mow we've been playing, uh, playing uh, a haul here there um, a couple of years ago. We, we, we didn't know how we were going to draw it in, but we had enough trailers. And we said, I rang my local haulier, Sean Lawler, there, and he said, yeah, sure, we'll give it a go. Sure. It's a great move. Well, that's it, yeah. I suppose you said earlier on there, like, you know, you're not leaving lads in queues or anything like that. Well, it gives us all the options, like, I mean, he's able to cover whatever we're able to do, you know. And lads can go off, you can go off cut silage and cut corn at the same yeah. time. Yeah, like this morning, we were cutting second cut silage and there was two lads at home with uh, two combines. Exactly, yeah. And, one, and, and the lorries drew it from us. And it makes a big difference then as well. At least you have all your your own lads moving, and you're not worried about tractors no, hauling grain like, all the time. Okay, whatever we have to, whatever we pay them, uh, it, it, it's still in my mind anyway. It just makes sense to me. We were around bale or there, we don't do a lot of baling, just every every farmer has his own options and there's square bales and they want to decent but we have a couple of customers there that we where we cut we bale for them and have the bale or there and uh yeah. we're to do your own really as well so we do our own, yeah. It's so not something you push on a regular basis anyway, like no. no. We used to bale hay one time and then it clashed with the silage and then they wanted rakes and this and that and other look at bale and it's grand. Uh, three or four days bell there a year and it's there. If you're yeah. variable chamber bell or some customers want a big bell because they're bedding weight so they don't want that many bell, you know, others want four foot so. Yeah, it's, it's handy. It's handy enough business. And I suppose it's a match too. Uh, I suppose maybe. You can make a soft bell for hair yeah. or a tight bell for yeah. straw yeah. depending on what the customer's needs are so yeah. you're kind of, yeah. it kind of increases that too, yeah, yeah. it's a big difference. It's, um, yeah, sure, it's part of the job, isn't it? Mm. Completes, it completes the thing. It completes the the workload, is exactly. Yeah, it just gives the package, thing, you know, like the spray and them to do the all that. It's yeah. To struggle. With the three combines and baler working, it's a busy day with all the machines away from the yard. We see the T7040 and BR740 making light work of the straw. Roger talks about the benefits of the lighter TX62 combine. 
Yeah, it travels wet ground there, you know, in the wet years there she was able to travel where the others couldn't travel. And I see, I see actually I have taken the wheels off the, the flotation tyres you use on the 6080 during the springtime you use on the 62 as well. Yeah, that's right, yeah, she just leaves it, sits her up a bit better on the front and she leaves her just travelling in compaction. Mm. You know, compaction is a big thing. You have to, you have to treat the people's land with respect. With some farmers hauling their own grain, both the TX62 and CS640 work way together to get through the peak of the malting barley harvest together. Keith and Roger harvesting wheat on a neighbouring farm during one of the last busy harvest days of the year. To us about his favourite tractor in the fleet, the TM155. Yeah, great tractor, one of one of the best tractors around, I'd say. Or, you know, they were a great tractor. That tractor did a lot of work for us. And for ten years old, it's still remarkably well. It looks very well. You keep your tractors in immaculate condition, Roger, don't you? Oh, well. The lads do. The lads do. Yeah, that's they're good it. at keeping them clean and keeping them tidy. That's it. Because that's part of it, isn't it? It is. Um, Not breaking things. <laughs> no, well, if it's broke, fix it. 
That's then nice. it doesn't become a wreck. Yeah. No, the Thames were great tractors. We had three of them one, at one stage. Right. They were great tractors. With the harvest finished up and with grassland acreage increasing, it's been a busy year receding ground. Yeah, grass, grass seeding yeah, has become a good part of the business too. Uh, we got a leveller there a few years ago. You know, it starts in April and you could get seeds. I suppose in one respect, I suppose a lot of farmers find that like receding um, yields dividends for them, so they have to go well, sure, seeds. So you can't beat new seeds That's it, for yeah. yield and for everything. Uh, there's so many options of reseeding. Some people want to plow, some people want to direct seed, and some people want land levelled up. And some ground doesn't need levelled up. Some people don't want to spend the money levelling it. They just want new seeds. You know, yeah. there's so, so many options. So that's it. Yeah. We do the best way we can. A simple apparatus, a simple way of doing it, you know. I seen it done in a drill somewhere down the country and came home and had an old Dakar drill, and that was on the power hour before I bought the cone drill. So when I bought the cone drill, I kept that one and modified it for sown grass. Yeah. With an after hour on it as well for houring it in. Then you'd roll it afterwards as well, then. Ring roll it after, yeah. All the pins, there's so many mix and match options with grass seeds. You mean you can be at seeds today when you be doing nothing else? Here we see one of Roger's T6080s hooked up to Caverland 5 for a plough. With a lot of ground to drill, there's also plenty to plough, and while many farmers plough their own, Roger has some whole farm stubble to stubble contracts that need to be fulfilled. Although he has two ploughs, when the pressure is on, Roger hires in his neighbour Johnny with the T7200 and five for of Ireland plough.
In the last chapter of the DVD, we see Roger's latest machines, the first being a Lely Hibiscus Night 15 rig. On a dark wet evening in August, and with most of the second cut finished, we see the 416 replacement, a JCB 418, in action on the pit. With a larger cab, more weight, more power and more torque, the loader drivers are very happy with it and feel it's a big improvement over the old 416. We finish up by asking Roger how he would feel about expanding his business in the future. Probably, yeah, but sure, we'll see how it goes. You can't do it all, mm. you know. Mm. We only do what we can do and do it, serve the customers we have and serve them properly. Exactly. There's okay. no point in trying to serve everyone and serving no one properly. Exactly, yes. Yeah, so. Customers number one all the time, I suppose. Really. Has to be. Yeah. Has to be. Without a customer, you don't have a business. Yeah, well, that's it. Exactly. You always yeah. have a customer's a very precious thing in this day yeah, and age. It certainly is. It has to be minded. Yeah. As long as they appreciate a good contractor. <laughs> <laughs>
Saint Bernard seems to be nice to hear about Yeah, ah yeah, ah yeah, it's nice The old good taste is most. That's how it happened the other day. But can you erase that? I want the camera there. Definitely not getting mine, it's all the way to mommy. Have you read the page later on? Hey, ma. Any chance of a sandwich, ma. Roger, where are we going with the committee? Tis Ross, your girlfriend will be very happy with you when she sees those windows. She's not going to see you because you're going to hit it out with John, that's why. And it's Saturday evening, yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's how they're all really nice to me because it's Saturday evening. <laughs> That's it now, lads. I've got to pass by you, will I? 20 minutes, please. Okay, that It's all rubbish now, but it's not there any of it here. Throwing business out of it, huh? Do you have to finish the beer out of the cake before you use it as a stand for the trailer, Roger? Well, look, you couldn't use a full cake of beer inside this. It might leak, so you better get into it before you use it. <laughs>